Hi, so this is my third video on foil pumping. Uh, the first one was comparing uh, low aspect ratio foils with high aspect. Um, the second one was, for me, was sort of a slightly more refined version of uh, how to pump the high aspect foils. Uh, this time, um, I'm sort of taking it to, to what I consider to be my next level. Uh, I'm sure this isn't everybody's next level, you may be way beyond it already, but uh, from my progression point of view, uh, I've been doing a lot of wing foiling, um, some sup foiling, uh, but a lot of, um, of flat water pumping and wake foiling. Uh, it's just the conditions that we have here at the moment and the lockdowns uh, means that uh, more often than not, I'm either wake, bo wake foiling behind the boat um, or, uh, or just anchoring up the boat and then jumping off the boat uh, and pumping around. But it's mostly with the GL240, uh, but when I'm wake foiling, um, more and more it's been the NL220 and occasionally the, the P180. Um, so I'll do a different video on the different pumping, on how each of those foils pump, because there is a slightly different technique. But in this video, what I'm focusing on um, are just the different techniques of foil pumping that you can use and when they're needed. Um, the more that I did uh, flat water pumping, just to practice for, you know, for being able to connect waves or for, um, with the wind wing, just being able to, to pump through to the, to the next bit of swell uh, if needed. Um, the more I did this, the more I realised that you can change either your foot position or your body position or um, your centre of mass position and it really makes a big difference. Uh, also talking to other people, um, like James Casey made me aware of, uh, of a, a much more refined or, or efficient way of, uh, of pumping. Um, so the three or techniques, if you like, that I'm going to focus on are what I call uh, the maintenance pump, uh, which is really for maximum efficiency, um, so you can maintain the glide as long as possible. Uh, then there's the what I call the power pump, which you can use to, to really speed up a drive of speed, um, give you a little bit of extra power if you can feel that you're you're um, uh, you know you're you're fading and, and need to, to get going again. Um, and thirdly, uh, what I call is a height pump. So to give you just a, a really quick way of, of gaining height on the mast. Um, so <clears throat> getting down to it, just uh, demonstrating each technique before I go over to the videos and just talk over some of those videos to, to show you examples. Um, so if I'm foiling normally, uh, I would probably have my feet in, in this sort of position roughly this distance apart. Um, but if I'm doing a maintenance pump, I'll bring my front foot back to, to close the distance between my feet, so I have a, a narrow or closer stance. Um, sometimes, depending on the foil that I use, I'll move my, my back foot up um, as well. Uh, but the most of the foils, I find that it's, it's more effective to move the front foot back uh, rather than the, uh, the back foot forwards. So the maintenance pump, a very upright stance, and it literally is just a, I don't know if you're really silly doing it now, but that's as best that I can, uh, I can get to, to showing you off the water. And it's a momentary sort of unweighting, so you're trying to sort of unweight by bringing your feet up and then immediately pushing down. So unweight, push, down to straighten your body, and it's really quick, like that sort of thing. Um, okay, so we're going, the maintenance pump is going for maximum efficiency, so that you're, you're expending as little energy as possible. And what we're trying to do is keep the board really parallel with the water, so you're not angling the nose of the board down at all, because that's gonna lose height on the mast, and then you've got to expend energy to get back up again to the same height. Um, that's more for the, for the power pump. Um, so we're just trying to pump it, keeping the board as parallel as possible, which is why we bring front foot back, so you can push 
pretty much equal pressure on both feet at the same time and gets, uh, you know, you're not going to wear out your back foot with this pump at all, um, sorry, your back leg, uh, because you're trying to, to use the same amount of force with both legs, and by bringing your, your front foot back, you're not going to angle the, uh, the board down. Okay, so going over to the, uh, to the power pump, move my front foot forwards or back into the normal sort of position, um, and this is much more of a whole body you know, the, the normal sort of pump. And it's that uh, you're trying to get a little bit of movement down and then up. You're not porpoising like, um, like the low aspect pump, but to get that speed, you've got to angle it down, angle the front of the, the board, the nose of the board down just a little bit. And then you're pushing down with your back foot for the majority of the drive, going back up um, height-wise, <clears throat> so you're just driving the board down and then up for the majority of the uh, uh, of the pump. So it's very much compressing the body as well. So you're bringing your knees up, uh, bending your, your legs, bringing your knees up as you pivot your hips to bring your torso down. And obviously, I'm standing on. <laughs> On solid ground but on, on the water I would be bringing my knees up to meet my body as the body comes down and from there it's pushing down slightly on the front foot and then driving through the back foot so as you go down compressing and then pushing back up so you can get your arms involved as well um, that really helps uh, but there's, there's nothing strange and unusual about this one um, it's the one that I pretty much did from the word go for flat water pumping. Um, it's just to try to concentrate on getting that speed going by pointing the nose down and then immediately transferring the weight and the push uh, to generate the drive from the back foot. Um, so it's front foot and then back foot, front foot and then back foot. Um, so it's much more compressing your body. You can keep your, uh, uh, keep your body much lower and your center of mass further forward for this one. Um, for a burst of speed to speed up and acceleration, I would really bring my center of mass further forwards for the first bit. But you mustn't forget to then transfer um, all of the, the drive to your, uh, to your rear leg. If you don't transfer your weight forwards for the first part of it, then you're likely to stall. It's generating that speed to begin with and then pushing up um, and getting that compression going. Really, you can keep your body forward and then most of the drive coming from your legs uh, if you really want to generate speed. Okay, so um, the last one, the height pump. There's a bit of a hybrid of the two. Um, I personally prefer keeping my, my feet closer together for this one, but it doesn't matter. You, you can easily do it with, uh, with your feet in a normal or, or, or wider distance apart. So with this one, it really is um, the front foot, you're hardly putting any pressure through your front leg at all. Um, your front foot is really just trying to keep the, uh, the angle of the board um, at the desired position, desired angle. So you're driving down with your back foot, and as soon as you get to the top of your pump, which is really straightening your legs, and you really are for this one, you're, you're straightening out. As you straighten out at the top, you level off. So you're driving down, and then your body is straight, and you level off. It's really important, and some of the videos show this really clearly, that as you push down with the back foot, you rise up and level off at the top. So it's, it's very much push up and straighten, push up with your back leg and straighten. And it's that action there, pausing at the top in that straight position that really helps you maintain um, the highest mast uh, position, the highest mast height uh, that you possibly can. Okay. Uh, one thing that I forgot to add to begin with was that you can combine the, uh, the techniques 
Um, so the maintenance pump, uh, you can adapt it to, uh, to generate a little bit of speed. Um, and it's, it's fairly simple, it's, it's just taking from the power pump, using your body mass to drive forwards for that little bit of, uh, of speed to begin with. Um, and as I said, bending your, uh, your hips so that your torso is forward, keeping your body position down. Um, well, with the power pump, instead of just going that very upright body position like so, you can move your hips forward. As you move your hips forward, you're transferring your weight to your front foot. Now, if you were to, to lean all the way forwards, like with the, uh, the power pump, that's fine because your front foot is more forwards. But if you're in the maintenance pump position with your front foot back, then suddenly all of your weight is over your front foot and it's very hard not to uh, uh, angle the board too far down. You lose height on the mast really quickly, maybe even nose plant. So rather than leaning forward, you're just going to move your hips forward. Um, and as you, it's more of a, that sort of motion. <laughs> rather than just bolt upright like this, you're going forwards as you do your little jumps. So the first clip that I'm showing, it really is just a few basic examples of, of what I've got in mind to, uh, to take you guys through. Um, so you can see there just what I'm talking about as a maintenance pump, keeping a very upright body, um, pushing down the legs. Um, it's different when you're flat water pumping compared to uh, doing it behind a wake or being pushed by a wave. Uh, but I'm just trying to show some examples specifically for this video here, so uh, it's a bit contrived. Um, so if that's the maintenance pump, then uh, a few examples of like a power pump really uh, compressing the body, pushing the nose down and then driving with the back foot to bring it back up again. Um, just trying to show the differences between those two. Uh, the maintenance pump here, I'm on the P180. Uh, as you can see, I've got my feet really close together. Um, body position very upright, so I'm getting some good glide at the top of uh, uh, most of the pumps. Um, considering now power pump, um, really compressing the body a lot more, leaning forward into it, the nose of the board going up and down, a closer shot here. So uh, you can see the nose of the board, um, like I say, a bit contrived some of these. <laughs> it's, it's hard to do them on demand. I do them when I need to, but to try and make the situations quite tricky. Um, foot placement. So. Uh, the first one of these clips is just uh, fully through, so here I'm, uh, and then I'll do it in slow-mo. Um, the uh, P180, again on this run, my feet are, are very close together. Now if you just saw that, uh, my feet went, a my front foot went a little bit further out to go into the power pump, and any minute now the front foot comes back again, there it was. Um, much more upright again for the uh, back to the maintenance pump. So um, this time in slow motion, not the whole thing, but uh, some of it. So this is the maintenance pump, feet close together, and any second now, watch my front foot. The front foot moves further apart, there it goes, and I'm now leaning further forward, compressing more, nose of the board is going up and down uh, more than it was and again this is power pump I'm afraid it goes on for a little bit my IT skills um, I should have shortened this bit really sorry okay so still power pump driving the nose of the board down before using the back foot to, to really push it up, uh, driving through that front and then back foot to get back up again. And any second now, that front foot moves a little bit further back, there it goes, and my body position is now much more upright, back into that maintenance pump. Okay, 
So next one should be the height pump. I've got three clips. The third one I go through a second time in slow-mo. So on the second wake here, so I'm stomping down on the back foot and pausing right up at the top to gain maximum glide at the, uh, at the top, at the highest mark, mass position. So I've done it again there, and there you go. Push it, oh, I didn't manage to hold that one, so pump, pump, and then pausing at the top. In this clip, I'm carving around, and after a while, I lose height on the mast, and I need to do a few pumps, and then really push down hard on the back foot to gain mast height. And this one, really quick, there you go, blink and you miss it, so it's in slow-mo again. Uh, really pushing down on the back foot to raise the board up, and then pausing at the top there, uh, just to maintain that mast height. Okay, on to the NLs. So, pumping the NLs, how is it different to pumping the other gofoils? Um, for me, this is the least experience I've got in pumping. I'd say the GLs by far and away I've pumped them the most. The P180 I've spent a good amount of time on. Um, the NLs I'm just beginning to get used to. And to begin with, I was very, very inefficient with them. Um, I'm beginning to feel like I'm beginning to dial them in. Um, but when I look at YouTube videos of, of people like Mike Pedigo who have been using the NL160, this one here, the uh, NL160, um, he pumps it as easily as, as you know other people would pump the, the, the P180 perhaps, or certainly the, uh, the GLs. Um, he gets really good glide, he's, he's, his technique is obviously spot on. He's a big guy, I think he's taller than me, um, uh, so if somebody like him can pump the NL160 as well as he does, I'm thinking that my technique has got a lot to do with it and, and I'm not there yet by a long way. But at the moment, what I'm thinking is uh, how the technique for the NL, pumping the NL is different to the GLs and the P180. Um, the GLs, um, it's got a classic pump technique with the uh, foot stance, you can have nice and wide for a, a, a power pump. You can bring your feet closer together for a, for a maintenance pump. Very easy to, to generate height by pushing down on the back foot and leveling off at the top. Um, the P180 is even better because it just has such a direct feel. Instead of going down and up with each pump, the P180 just sort of, it just, it's almost like the water is solid underneath it. Um, and all of that gets all of that energy you're putting in through each pump um, just gets transferred to forward motion and as a result it's much more efficient to pump, especially higher on the mast. With the NLs, yes it's important to keep it higher on the mast, not as important as the other two. I think as long as you maintain the height on the mast um, you can keep going, but more important than, than height is keeping the speed going. And whereas with the GLs and the P, um, you can do this up and down movement through the water. With the NLs, really, it's almost like you're trying to keep the angle, um, the angle of attack high at the front, so it's, it's always pointing upwards. So you're not actually doing that, but that's, to me, that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. Um, it's all about foot position and centre of mass while you're pumping. So, like I say, if you've got a wide foot placement, with the NLs, because I think at the moment anyway, they're much more back foot orientated. If you've got a wide stance, then you're going to really wear out your back leg. Your muscles are going to tire much quicker if you've got a wide stance. Um, and also, it's, it's much easier to, uh, to angle the front of the board down if you've got a wider stance. But bringing your front foot back, definitely not moving your, your back foot forward, um, bringing your front foot back so that, they're, that they've got the, the narrowest foot stance with the NLs, and I'm pumping the NLs than any other foil. Um, and when you've got this sort of maintenance pump going on, or you're really getting into it, 
you're able to put very equal amounts of, of force through both legs so you're not wearing out your back leg quicker than the front leg. And more than that, if you're sort of keeping more upright, then you're able, you've, your center of mass is slightly further back, so you're able to put more force through your back leg without wearing it out because your front foot is, is further back. So in doing so, you're, you're sort of constantly trying to keep it up, and that will keep the speed up. If you let it go down height-wise, then you either reach the point where the board touches the water and you stop, or you try to increase the height again, um, and uh, that will slow you down considerably. And from that moment on, it's, it's just so much less efficient. I've found that once I've made a mistake on the NLs and I've lost speed, I'm putting in two or three times the amount of effort into each pump just to keep going. But if you can tweak and refine, not tweak, refine your technique to the point where you don't lose speed, then yes, it's more of an energetic pump. Um, and you're putting more energy into each pump, but you're going so much faster. Um, so that's where I've got to at the moment with pumping the NLs. If anybody out there has pumped the NLs and, and you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to hear from you because this is new ground for me. This is, uh, you know, next level, as the name implies. Um, so I'd love to, uh, to hear from other people about this. Um, okay, so I think that's it for me on pumping the NLs. Uh, let's get back to, uh, to time in the water. Okay, pumping the NL220 here. Uh, I'm really trying to keep the nose of the board up as much as I possibly can. And although it's very back foot heavy, um, because my front foot is so close to my back foot, um, I'm still uh, generating quite a lot of almost equal force uh, through both legs. And you can see in the slow-mo here that the, uh, the front of the board never angles down. Um, in actual fact, it's... Uh, most of the time it's it's just varying degrees of angling up. Uh, that's the effect I'm going for anyway. Over to the pros. Okay, so the first of the pro riders I want to show is Kane de Wild. And in this clip, he shows quite clearly how you can still be in the maintenance sort of uh, uh, the maintenance pump position with an upright body. Uh, but you can generate more speed and power by, um, as you bend your knees, you're, you're moving your hips forwards. So you're, you're able to uh, just generate more power by pushing down harder, um, but still keeping that upright, upright stance. So I'll play it through first of all at normal speed and then uh, slow it down a bit. So he's got an upright stance, he's pushing down, but as he bends his knees, he's really pushing his hips forward. So let's take that back again. And this time we'll go into uh, half speed and play it again. So nice upright position. He's trying to get his weight forward. So instead of leaning forwards with his torso, he's pushing his hips forwards as he bends his knees. Uh, maybe I'll go through that just one more time. Okay, so bends his knees, hips go forwards, and then he pushes to straighten his body up. It's really effective. And the next clip is of Keahi. Um, and he's on one of the original Neil Pride foils, uh, which has a completely different style to, uh, to the Go foils. So um, in this clip, he's gonna demonstrate really clearly about foot placement changing. Um, now, obviously for the Neil Pride foils, uh, he's moving his back foot, whereas I've been talking about moving the front foot. So don't be alarmed, it's, it's not um, that I've been wrong with the go foils. I'm positive that it's mostly about moving the front foot back uh, to, to get the closest foot position. Um, but Neil Pride seems to be uh, very different. So, um, Let's just have a look at this. There's quite a bit to show you on it. 
such a beautiful location and an amazing style. So here you've, you've just seen him shift his foot stance really close together. He's cruising. Um, this isn't really showing much about pumping, but it's showing you uh, the foot change. So obviously a wider stance gives you much more control for turning. Um, but it's the same for power. It gives you more control um, for power, for carving. Um, and then, yeah, he's got his feet closer together. You can see how easily this guy moves his feet around on the board. It's totally balanced now. You know, he's, uh, uh, he's just cruising around. Um, cameraman doing us a little bit of a favor there. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's KR. He's just showing a few little pumps there in the, uh, the, the closest uh, narrow foot position. Um, anyway, that's enough of that. Beginning to get jealous. This clip, or well, the next three clips actually, are of Mike Pedigo. Um, this is really relevant for us because he is using the NL160. So in this clip, he's going to show a nice upright stance for the maintenance pump to begin with. And then as he banks around to the left uh, and gets towards the left-hand side of the screen, he's going to sort of change that to the power pump. And he's going to pivot forwards at his hips and really start to accelerate as the uh, the board goes up and down more or down and then up i should say to, to generate speed for that power pump um so to begin with he's got a lovely upright stance he's uh, a maintenance pump going on there nicely and then he's leaning forwards and really accelerating along so let's just have a uh, uh another quick look at that um in slow-mo why not okay so maintenance pump he's uh, turning now he's beginning to lean forwards more really driving that power as you saw i hope the uh, uh the nose of the board was was really sort of going down before back foot pressure pushing it back up again um just you know just enough to be able to generate that speed Okay, so the second clip with Mike Pedigo, um, it's going to show him pumping out to a wave, and then as he goes over the next wave, he pushes down for a pump and really straightens his body. That's getting maximum height and glides just as he goes over the wave. Um, it's a lovely example of, of what a lot of people are calling uh, pause pumping. So as you push down and straighten your body uh, on, a, on a height pump, then you pause at the top and you can just keep that glide going. Um, it's a really, really effective technique. So let's just have a look at it first of all at normal speed. So uh, here he goes, pumping towards and straightening his body right at the top of that pump. And here he's leaning forward, getting his weight involved over the front leg a little bit more to make sure he generates enough speed and power to, to make sure he, he can connect to that wave. So uh, let's bring that back um, just one more time. We'll have a look at it this time at half speed. Okay, so he's putting a reasonable amount of effort into it, really straightening his body as he pushes down with each pump. And there we go, straightening his body, keeping that glide going as long as he can. And now he's leaning over the front leg a little bit more to generate speed as he carves around to connect onto the wave. Beautiful. Include in this video. Um, so in this one, uh, we're going to see Mike doing some power pumping and again, a couple of um, glides uh, where he does a height pump, glides over the top of a, a wave um, and then carries on power pumping before turning into another wave. So uh, let's check this out first of all at normal speed. So you can see from there, he's really putting a bit of effort in there to, uh, to keep his speed going and a nice height pump pausing to get over the wave and then more power pumping, really leaning into it to turn onto the wave. And I'm going to play it out here because he's just such a cool foiler. He really is just having a, a, a wicked time there. Um, Got to love it, even going for a barrel there. So uh, let's just bring that back one last time. Um, 
slow it down so we can see what's going on. Of course, you can uh, slow it down anytime you like uh, if you want to yourself. Right, so there, power pump, power pump, really compressing and then uncompressing each time, really you know, keeping as much speed as he possibly can. And as he approaches the wave, he stomp down on the back foot, straightens his body for the glide, keeps that straight position as he glides, and then back into the power pump as he's, uh, as he's carving around. Just beautiful to watch. Okay, so there's a lot to take in there. Um, this is all based on my opinion, my thoughts, my experiences, um, and I'm willing to be proven wrong. You know, if anybody thinks I'm talking out my ass, then let me know. Uh, if you've got anything to add, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear. Um, really, this is the type of thing where everyone's got their own style, especially with different gear. You know, different foils, different setups. Um, it's all going to be slightly different. So this is by no means gospel. Um, so uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for putting up with me. I um, hope it's been useful. And I'd love to hear from you if, uh, if you want. Cheers for now. Bye.